Hi, I'm Creston, and in this tutorial, we're going to cover PostgreSQL replication with easy failback. Now, by failback, I mean you already have failed over from your primary database to your replica, but now you want to fail back to your old primary database. This tutorial assumes you already have streaming replication set up. If not, watch my streaming replication tutorial that is in the link in the show notes. First, we're going to go over a few slides that discuss some concepts, and then we're going to jump into the command line to show you how it's done. Okay, let's get started with PostgreSQL replication and easy failback. So by failback, I mean you've done a failover, you have a master and a replica server, one or more, and you've promoted a replica, but now you want to fail back to the original master. That's what I mean by failback. So there are times you're going to want to reuse an existing master after failover. Now, you can always restore the database and create a new replica on that master, but let's say you want to keep all the data in place because you have a multi-terabyte database and it would take a very long time to rebuild a new replica. Oh, one such example as this is, say you want to do a uh, maintenance window and you may want to do a failover to a replica, do some maintenance work and then fail back to the master. So you don't ha want to have to restore the whole database. So there's an easy way to do it if you can ensure that no writes take place on the old primaries after you have promoted another database server. So for example, if you've promoted a replica from your old master, as long as no writes happen to that master after the promotion occurs, you should be able to fail back to it pretty easily. Now there are some situations where if you do have writes, you can use a tool called PG Rewind, and I'm going to cover that in a future tutorial, um, but for this tutorial, I'm just focusing on a way to do it um, easily uh, without having to use a tool like that. So the scenario that we're going to run through is that uh, you have a main database cluster and a replica database cluster. You're going to shut down the primary cluster because, again, we don't want writes hitting it after a promotion event. Uh, you're going to promote the replica cluster. You're going to bring up the old primary the, again, this is the main as a replica now. So if writes happen to that replica cluster after it's promoted, you can capture those because your main cluster, what was your old primary, is now syncing the data. Now let's say you want to fail back and bring up the main cluster as your new primary database. So first, again, to ensure that no writes happen after a promotion, we're going to go ahead and shut down that current primary database called, and that's the replica cluster. Then you're going to promote the old primary database cluster, the one called main, and bring up that replica again as a new replica. So it will start syncing again with that new primary cluster. All right, let's jump into the live examples. All right, for this example, I'm going to be using Ubuntu and I have PostgreSQL 10 install the latest version as I'm doing this tutorial. Now there is a primary database cluster set up called main on port 5432 and a replica database cluster called replica set up on port 5433. There's also a test database that exists with a post table on it in two posts. Now the replica is doing streaming physical replication of the main database cluster. Now this was set up in a previous tutorial, and I will include a link in the show notes that tells you how to get to this point, because these are actively streaming now using replication slots. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to assume the role of the Postgres user and take a look at this post table. So we have these two posts in the post table. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is stop the main cluster, which is the current primary. So I'm gonna do it in this user that has sudo permissions. 
Okay, that should be stopped. Now I'm going to promote the replica as well as take a look at the log for the replica. We can see that it received the promote request and it's changed the new to a new wall timeline ID 10 and database system is ready to accept connections. And I'll go ahead and insert into this cluster again 5433. Okay, so that data is inserted. It is no longer read-only. All right, now I want to bring up that main cluster as a new replica. So because I haven't defined this before, I need to create a recovery.conf file for the uh, main cluster. So I'm going, this by Ubuntu and PostgreSQL 10, this is where the directories are created and it, this is the main cluster so I need to create this file in this location and then I'm going to insert these commands into this file so the restore command is the same that was used in a previous tutorial except we're specifying main as the cluster because that's essentially where the Restore commands need to happen where the PG log archive is located. In addition, the, we're going to need to, we're going to be using a primary slot, so we're using replication slots, and I'm calling that main. And the only other change is the connection info. We need to make sure we're connecting to the replica port, which is five four three three. So those changes have been made. All right. Now, because we're using this slot, we need to create uh, the physical replication slot called main, because that's what we're using here, and create it on the replica, because right now it does not have any replication slots enabled. Okay, so that's been created. Now we can go ahead and start the main database cluster again and take a look at its logs. So we can see that started streaming here, ready except read-only connections. It switched to the new target timeline and restarted while streaming on timeline 10. And if we take a look at the data, It should have that row that we inserted when the replica was primary, or it still is primary, but it, it is did replicate this data. So the master has successfully been brought back up as a replica. All right, now let's fail back to use the main cluster as the primary. So to do that, we'll go ahead and stop the replica cluster. And we'll go ahead and promote the main cluster and we'll take a look at the logs. We can see received its promote request here, selected the new timeline ID 11 and database system is ready to accept connections. So again, using, okay, we'll insert some data into this new master that got inserted. Now we need to set up the recovery.conf file again. However, because it already had one and when you do a promotion, it changes recovery.conf to recovery.done. So that file already exists in the replica cluster as recovery.done. So all we need to do is move it to be recovery.conf. Okay. So that's been done. And now we simply start and check the logs or start up the replica cluster and check the logs. Okay, we can see started streaming while from the primary 
it followed the new target timeline and we're restarted streaming on timeline 11. And if we look at the replica cluster, we should see the four rows. So it did successfully start replicating the new data. Now, at this point, the replica still has the main replication slot. But as you can see, it's not active because the main cluster is active, but it's not replicating from the replica. So we want to go ahead and get rid of this slot so it doesn't retain potentially wall files on the replica. So to do that, I'm going ahead and again, connecting to the replica and dropping this replication slot. Okay, so that's been dropped, so we don't have to worry about that. Now, what's interesting that you may notice is that replication slots is one of the few features that essentially doesn't get replicated from a main to the replicas. They each kind of have their own replication slot definitions. So just keep that in mind as you're doing failovers to keep an eye on how the replication slots are set up for each of your instances. I hope this has been helpful. If you want the commands used in this tutorial, be sure to check out the link in the description below. If you want to receive additional content and tutorials, please visit scalingpostgres.com and sign up. Thanks.